What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. As you can see in the title of the video, I am going to run down the, my top 10 comics for 2024 that I think will trend. Um, there was a little bit of thought going into this, but not really because... I'm not like doing research as far far as like what what book should I invest in? To me, I I don't I'm I'm going when I buy comics, I'm not really thinking as an investment really because over the last like couple of years of buying comics and getting into collecting, I really don't I've learned I'm kind of growing to like not think of uh this hobby as as an investment you know what i mean if the prices go up great but i'm really just like i enjoy the art i enjoy the stories um and i love hunting for comics uh i was watching a video of uh, pop comics and that's basically what he runs it down to it's like the thrill of the hunt uh the art and the story and that's why i buy comics but with this hobby, you really cannot talk about the prices because some a lot of the prices go up, they go down, books get hot, and that's what it is. But as far as investing, like I don't think comic books are a great like investments. There's a lot of downside to investing in comics. And my main thing about that is the liquidity of it if if you have a good outlet to liquidate a lot of your comics like uh, uh like say an ebay you know account or whatever great invest in comics and but you could get burnt on a lot of stuff you could be buying something that's not then it's not worth a dollar you know what i mean so or you could buy something for a dollar that turns into like a 50 dollar book so it's like for me, I don't think comics are a great investment. I feel like it's a great hobby. It's a great collect because there's a lot, because a lot of hobbies you could do and you won't make any money. You don't have any, uh, liquidity. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'm trying, like, I'm trying to think of like a hobby that just, you know, you put a lot of money into and then, and then it's, you get out of that hobby or you, you don't have, uh, anything to show for it. Or like your interest goes away and you don't have anything to show for it. But anyways, I don't, <laughs> I'm getting a little, uh, too, uh, rambling on as far as investments and stuff like that. But, uh, this is going to be my top 10, uh, comic books that will trend that have a good possibility of trending in 2024. Like I said, with trend, like, I'm not saying, I'm not going to go as far as saying the prices will go up because I don't know. I don't, who knows? It might go up. They it might could just stay at the same level. It could be, you know, but, and I'm not looking at like the data. I'm just going by gut instincts, cultural trends, just looking at the landscape of everything um, and in this top 10, I'm not picking DC or Marvel. For one, I don't think they're even really doing much in this year, which they need to take a break. Um, because, uh, I'm kind of, it's just, it's, it's not even superhero fatigue. It's freaking, uh, bad writing and wokeness fatigue. I'm tired of their uh, Marvel and DC's just bad writing and garbage and their agenda driven, you know, stuff like just adapt the comics. And that's it. That's all they should be doing, but they're not. They're doing other garbage. And that's why they're failing. Um, but let's get into it. My top 10 comic books. That will trend and uh, continue to trend in uh, 2024. 
All right, my number 10 is Warhammer Monthly Zero. <clears throat> now, Henry Cavill, the reason this is my number 10, Henry, Henry Cavill, it's official. Um, Amazon Prime and, that, and Henry Cavill are working together, working on a Warhammer, I guess, TV show? or Yeah, it, I think it might be a TV show series. And I have a thesis um or a theory of why i think this could be successful um henry cavill is passionate about this ip um he's going to be producing it i guess he's going to be starring in it too and um henry cavill's a uh, top-notch actor in hollywood probably the only one one of the only actors that are um embrace the fans and in, in the source material now there's a downside of this. this is amazon they could go the route of the witcher and totally kind of screw over henry cavill and make it not about i don't know not about the source material and go some agenda driven garbage you know i i i'm i'm on, I'm on guard for that coming up, so I'm a little worried about that, but my theory of Amazon and Netflix are trying, I think if they're smart and they want to grab the, the, the market share of masculine sci-fi and just good sci-fi, and just different, you know what I mean? Like, cause Star Wars, Disney has ruined Star Wars and there's, they turned that into a girl brand. It opened up a whole, whole, like, cause Star Wars had a, a, a grab of the market share for the boys sci-fi and just entertaining sci-fi for years. They had the market share of that. And now fandom has been tur basically turned off from Star Wars. I know I, I'm not, I I don't care about Star Wars anymore. <laughs> but my number 10, Warhammer Monthly. Now the thing about this, why I pick it is because it's it's pretty rare. I think the this, this first preview of Warhammer, I found this thing in a dollar bin in an antique shop. So, and I, tr and I turned it in to get graded and I got a 9.6. So I think at a, at very high grades, this is rare. This is at kind of on the rare side. Cause I think these things been banged around into the dollar bins for years. So I don't think they can, I think the condition is key, um, with this issue. Um, and I think with like Warhammer and, other game related uh, comic books have kind of been neglected by c comic shops and all that. They didn't just been thrown because it's like, oh, it's a video game comic. I'll throw it in it. Now, now a lot of the comic shops are actually looking at these and be like, oh, this got a little bit of value. But I'm, this is what I'm saying. You could find a lot of these issues that I'm going to talk about. You could find, you could probably more likely find these in back issue bins. You know, it might be a stretch, but there's a possibility because for years, you know, oh, it's not Marvel, DC, I'm going to throw it in a back issue bin. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you might be able to find, you know what I mean? Comic shop owners, they kind of neglect video game comics and, and stuff like niche stuff like this. But Warhammer has a great following, great fan base. I personally want to learn more about it. It looks like a freaking awesome world, like Space Marines, you know. Sign me up. If it's got Henry Cavill in it, it could be good, you know what I mean? But that's my pick. And kind of segueing into my ninth pick is Gears of War. Number one. Uh, low, I, I want to say this is a low print run, uh, book. 
I think it's getting getting a little bit more pricier. Um, but the same thing with Warhammer. This is going to be a Netflix series. And like I said, with Warhammer, I think the uh, Netflix and all the production companies other than Disney, um, if they're smart, they would try to get into the masculine sci-fi market because it's wide open because we haven't had good sci-fi because um, we've only had like just woke sci-fi or, or garbage sci-fi. Um, but I think Gears of War could scratch this itch or grab a hold of that uh, market share. But Netflix is doing something with it. Um, I don't know if it's in production. We might be hearing something about it this year. That's what I'm saying. The show or the movie. I think adaptations like in the process of being produced. But I'm... I'm excited for it. I'm excited what, what they're going to do with it. But, um, all right. Well, we're moving along because I've already just talked my, talked y'all's ear off about, uh, Warhammer, but Gears of War, I, I feel like if they do it right, and this is going to be a theme, if they do it right and stick to the source material of the video games and honor the fan base, and not put garbage in it, woke cultural garbage in it. Uh, sorry if that offends you or whatever, but that's my thesis on that. Um, knowing Netflix, who knows? Because sometimes they'll do something really good, and then sometimes they'll do some really just woke garbage. So it's a crapshoot. But uh, number nine is Gears of War, number one. And uh, number eight, which I don't, I'm not too, I don't think this real, like, could she get a huge spike? But it depends on the popular or the success of the movie that's coming out. And this is Mad uh, Max Fury Road, uh, Furiosa. Um, there is a trailer out. It looked good. It looked exciting. I enjoyed the first Mad Max Fury Road. Um, even though it had some like feminist, you know, you know, allegories or whatever in it. But it was still a fun movie. Um, if it's a fast paced, just it's got a couple great actors in it or hot actors that are hot in Hollywood now. Chris Helmsworth and Anna Taylor Joy. If, if, if the movie is a success, you're going to definitely see this uh, trend. So I think it's already been on a couple hot lists. But th this is an affordable book. I mean, I looked on eBay. It's still, it's not, it's like a $10, $15, maybe $20 book max. So, but I'm seeing a lot of copies on eBay. So I'm not, but it says it doesn't, it's like a 10,000 print run or something like that. I think the second print's a lot uh, more rare. <clears throat> but that's still like a ten twenty dollar book. It's not expensive, so we'll see. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I wish they would do more of the Mad Max with Tom Hardy. Um, that's what I want to see. But, anyways, that's uh, my number. What is that? Uh, eight. Yeah, that's number eight. Uh, number seven. Top 10, out of the top 10. This is, and this is going to be my oldest book on my list, really, I think. Yeah, because a lot of mine's just moderns. But with that, with it being a lot of moderns, I feel like the moderns, as far as pr price movement, have the, the biggest, obviously has the bis biggest risk reward as far as, a massive price swing as far as it getting hot. You know what I mean? Um, but beneath the Planet of the Apes with the poster. Now that's key, I think, because you could find a, a, po a copy without the poster attached inside for pretty cheap. 
but with the poster in decent grade, uh, it gets a little bit more rare and a little bit more pricey. I remember I picked this up for like 150 bucks a while ago. Now I, I want to preface this was on somebody else's, uh, the next, this one and the next one were on somebody else's like predictions on uh comic collector geek. They did one. So I want to give a shout out to them. I don't, and when they said it, it was that those, these next two books were already on my mind. So it's not like I was, I'm not trying to steal their ideas or whatever. But this one, I think, um, has the potential to go up in value. Now, you know, take that with a grain of salt. This is not financial advice, obviously. You know, buy your own risk. Buy what you like. I... So that's the thing. People people always say that it's true. Buy what you like. Buy the properties that you like, the IPs that you enjoy. I love. I, I remember watching Plan the Apes with Charlton Heston when I was damn <sighs> under ten years old. It was at like at my grandma's at on like a VHS or something. You know what I mean? And I was freaking blown away by the ending. And I think a lot of people were were. And I, I don't think that the first one was probably the best one, obviously, in my opinion, that Charlton Heston first one, it really did. It, I, but I enjoy the other ones. I, I actually enjoy the Beneath the Planet of the Apes one, too. Um, and people hate that. People hate on that one for some reason. But I love Planet of the Apes. Oddly, I have not even really watched... Um, I haven't watched the new trilogy with ones that they've been making with uh, the ones that coming out. And that's why this is on my list. The one that's coming out this year is uh, the next string of them. And I feel like they're going to be making damn playing. The, it seems like they're going to be making playing the Apes movies to the end of time. Um, but this was uh, number seven on my list. Um. I even like the freaking, I even like the Tim Burton one with Mark Wahlberg. Just, uh, but to segue into that, speaking of Tim Burton, my next pick is going to be Beetlejuice, uh, number one, uh, from Harvey Comics, uh, also, uh, Comic Collector Geek uh, set, had this on his predictions or whatever. It was one of his picks. So, but I already own I own this like a year ago. But reason, um, reason behind this is uh, they're making a Beetlejuice two. Uh, but. The thing about this one, I feel like it's got to be high grade because I've seen copies and they're just, they're not, they, they're, oh, this is a very fine. It's not, it's, and this one's like a very fine, but it's still, I, w I don't even know if I would send it in because it's, it's maybe a 9.0, 9.2, but in high grade, I think it's a little bit more rare for this book. But I feel like this book is definitely probably going to trend once we see some some footage of Beetlejuice 2. Um, the reason why this book is going to... Beetlejuice 2 could be good with Jenna Ortega and just the nostalgia factor. Now, Beetlejuice, I loved that movie when, it, when I watched it. And it's, to me, I think... That caught lightning in a bottle at the time. It was Tim Burton's, you know, one of his first movies. And it was just different at the time. Now you got Beetlejuice 2 and people were like, it's another sequel. But, like I said, uh, it, it could, like, with Jenna Ortega and how they, how Tim Burton does his movies, it could be, you know, Something different. So, be, you know, Michael Keaton will be back. You know, the makeup and all that 
it should be fun at least hopefully you know and i think this movie could or this uh comic could gain you know value or and, and trend now it's you know 40 50 dollar comic you know but look for high grade look for newsstands um but yeah that is my number six pick I really need to like write down a dialogue because I'm just like going by ear. <laughs> All right, number five of my top ten comics to look forward to or that will trend in 2024. Game of Thrones, number one. This is my number five pick. I know like a lot of people that season seven and eight of Game of Thrones really was a disappointment, but some of the garbage that, you know, that we've been seeing for the last couple years makes that stuff look like a masterpiece. Um, my opinion, I'm still disappointed with it, but they did redeem themselves a little bit. The franchise with house of dragon, even though it had, some issues with it i still like it um but season two is coming out um season two is coming out and i think that i think this book could get a little traction when that comes out because when it comes to game of thrones people tune in people tune in and it gets a little feverish because it's uh, good TV, it's good television, it's good weekly television. It could get hot, it could get traction. I'm just letting you know. But um, this book really doesn't get any love, even though it's it's a popular IP. And, I, and if you have, I love the books, you know, and I've those are some of the fastest books I've ever read. Because um, I was into the show at the time and. And it just gives you more, it's more of the show, but better. But I wish uh, um, George R.R. Martin would finish the books, but who knows if that'll ever happen. But yeah, I'm, and if um, these are a little bit of bonuses, I got it. You want with, I think there's a couple of different variants. This is the newsstand. Um, and there's also some retail ones. There's a lot of other, a lot of these have other variants. So look into the variants. Um, most of the, most of the ones I was showing you were like the cover A's and stuff. But look into the variants. Because um, they're going to be a little bit more rare. But um, also, maybe look out for the Hedge Knight and that variants. Because I feel like they're going to do something with Hedge Knight too. Because that's a good story and that's prequel territory with Game of Thrones. But... That was my number five pick. And number four. This is going to be a sleeper. Okay. Uh, Borderlands. I should have probably taken off the stupid My Comic Shop thing. But Borderlands Origin, uh, number one. I love Borderlands, the video game. I played hours upon hours of Borderlands 2 and 3. I don't think I played much of the first one. But I love... I love... Whoever's do. I don't know who's producing the movie. But it's coming out in August. And nobody's freaking talking about it. Um, at least from what I've seen. Nobody's talking about this comic. Nobody's talking about the movie. It's got a great cast. As far as on, on paper. It's got Kevin Hart... Kate Blanchett, um, Jack Black. And this thing comes out in August, early August, I think. I think it went through some production, little production delays and stuff. So who knows what's going on with this, with the movie. But if they nail the atmosphere and all that, I think this could be good. I think this could be really good. And... Hold on a second. Sorry about that. I had to walk away. But 
I think this could be really good. The movie, I mean, if they do it right, they, you know, honor the fans, stick to the, to the little bit closer to the games. And like I said, nail the atmosphere because bo the Borderlands games have that, um, it's almost like built to be a, it's almost built to be a comic book anyway. It looks like almost, cause it has like that gray, I forget, I forget like the tone, the gray tone kind of comic pop pops out at you i forget i knew the word to it um but like i said this is a sleeper because nobody's talking about it and you can find it pretty relatively cheap still online you know 20 bucks 10 bucks you gotta look for some deals some people asking too much money but but the whole look for the variants of this whole series of the first borderland origins because I think uh, it could, it's going to trend once the movie. I think when we see, I think we might, see, when trailers drop on Super Bowl, we, the, some of these comics are going to trend. That are the movies that are coming out and the, and the TV shows are coming out. So keep an eye out for that Borderlands number, yeah, number one. Look out for Borderlands 2, 3, and 4 of those uh, the comic series. Alright, number 3 in my top 10 predictions for 2024. God of War 1. Now, I might be going too hot into the video game related stuff. But I, like... My thinking is that... Hollywood is completely drained of any creativity and they are just picking from IPs that are already established and taking them for what they are what they're worth. And uh and it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Amazon owns is gonna be doing something with God of War, TV series, something, movie, TV series. Also, I think we're going to hear some news about the next God of War game coming out. And that's what it's, I think is going to drive. These are the catalysts that are going to drive this book to going up. Because it's already kind of a pricey book in a 9.8. But um, yeah, I I actually finished Ragnarok. And and it I still have fun playing those games. Even though... Um, the final bosses are kicking my ass but i i feel like it has a lot of long-term value because they're going to be doing god of war games for a while and now they're doing like a tv show but yeah also i would be picking up uh this series of god of war from 2018 one and two because i think they're going to do something with atreus that character i think it's gonna be set in that world but who knows what they're gonna do you know what i mean but god of war is a solid uh choice at number three and my number two pick is gonna be basically number two is gonna be anime related books uh anime related comics no, like your Shonen Jump, um, number number zero, uh, your Alita Battle Angel, uh, One Punch Man, Free Comic Book Day, uh, Akira, Dragon Ball Z. I don't have like a number one. I have other ones. It's just like this is just a sampling of what I would probably be looking out for because Netflix. I think they did good with uh, uh, One Piece and their Netflix or their uh, anime adaptations. I mean, it could go one. It could be garbage, um, but they did. They did do One Piece justice and manga is getting freaking more and more popular by the second. Um, more people are. Uh, getting into it because it's way better because they're doing way better stories than marvel and dc um 
way more entertaining and um, better writing. But yeah, I would I would pick up these if you could find them for cheap. I, especially, um, uh, I really like Alita. I really do. I really love that movie. Um, James Cameron. There, there's like rumors of some like a, a number two uh, sequel to the uh, Battle Angel. Um, we'll see. But I feel like manga inspired adaptations are are kind of the next big thing with uh, video game adaptations. Because like I said earlier, Hollywood is running out of ideas and they are not creative. They can't create their own original stuff, so they will cherry pick what they want and either make them a decent adaptation or destroy the franchise. So let's hope for the latter or the best outcome. If they like money, they would honor the fan base and do it justice. But for some reason, they don't, I, they just like losing money. I don't know. But that is my number two pick. Anime books. Keep an eye out for it. All right. My number one prediction for 2024, which you're not going to hear this from any other as far as I knew, a uh, comic book got, uh, list or top 10. But this is my number one. And there's been news out. Catal there's new, There's been news out recently and there's a, a, another catalyst coming. And that right here is my number one. Bitcoin comic handbook. Now, I went on eBay like a month or maybe two weeks ago, I bought these two books. I paid $60 a piece. I, I was trying to snap up as much as I can for the lowest price that I can at the best grade I can. Now they said that these were, you know, VF near mint, which I'm, I'm looking at it. They're, they're up there. You know what I mean? Depending on what you might call it's grading. CGC, it could get a 9.8, but there's only, retailers only ordered 730 of these books back in 2018 or whatnot, so there, it is a scarce book as far as that goes, and when you look on eBay, there's listings, they're asking 100, you know, you could get it, you know, like I said, you could try to haggle them down. I got these both for um, 60 each around that. But Bitcoin's getting more and more popular. They just came out with the spot ETF. Now, this isn't financial advice. This is my own opinion. I like Bitcoin. I like the future of Bitcoin. I like the idea of Bitcoin. I like it as a store of value because our dollar is going, to, the value of our dollar is going down. Because they keep printing more money. But I'm not going to go on why you should buy Bitcoin. Because this is a... Even though it is crypto comics and culture. But... My opinion. Not financial advice. Um, I would at least buy a little bit of Bitcoin. Not financial advice. That's just me. But... The happenings coming. Bitcoin's already been um, trending up through 2023 and I think 2024 there's going to be another crypto bull run going into 2025 we'll see you know nobody knows the future but that's my prediction and as far as this book that's why that's this is my number one for 2024 okay um that's why I bought a couple copies of it who knows? It might just stay a freaking sixty dollar book. I don't know, but I just know that I will. I'm getting into my collection because I like Bitcoin. I'm a buyer of Bitcoin, a supporter of Bitcoin. Call me crazy. Call me no. Oh, Bitcoin's a scam. Blah blah blah. No, that's just that's just what I do. So it is what it is. 
But anyways, that's my number one pick. I'm sorry for it being a long ass video and ranting on about everyone, but it is what it is. Um, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I, I really do. Anybody who watches, I really do appreciate it. Um, like this video, get it out to people because I want to hear y'all's top tens. I want to hear y'all's opinion on my top 10. If I'm crazy, if I'm not, but, uh, you guys have a good day. I'll see you on the next one. Later.